Take a London-based sushi restaurant that specialises in a variety of fresh foods transported on densely packed conveyor belts. And London. You get the idea. Yo Sushi was doing something different, and they were definitely standing out. Before long, Yo Sushi restaurants seemed to just be popping up everywhere. Shopping centres, high streets, airports, train stations. Yo Sushi no doubt filled a gap in that market. Fresh, fast, convenient food. Suddenly, people had options. It could be a quick lunchtime break with a solitary bowl of miso soup. Or it could be a special occasion where you put on your fancy pants and treat yourself to an exotic rice bowl. The idea is a simple one. Each dish is colour coded, the colours represent a different price, and you help yourself from a moving conveyor belt. But the idea, the idea is an old one. For that, we need to go to Japan. I bet you didn't see that coming. And all things high tech, a world of impeccable manners and robot overlords. Up steps a restaurant visionary named Yoshiaki Shiraishi, an experienced sushi chef. He wanted to open a restaurant, but restaurants are expensive, really expensive, like buying a boat expensive. Especially hiring staff. I mean, they may look adorable, but they are definitely not cheap. Mr. Shirashi had a problem. How do you go from this to this without this? Shirashi set about solving the problem. But, like all good ideas, they usually involve beer. In this case, beer on a conveyor belt. After a trip to a brewery, he noticed beer bottles going around and around on a conveyor belt. And with this idea, Shirashi went to work, and after five years, that's the downside of beer, he had a breakthrough. Yoshiaki Shirashi opens his first restaurant in 1958, and Conveyor Bell Sushi is born. Back to Yo Sushi, or now they're just called Yo. Yo Sushi was founded by Simon Woodruff. Simon had worked in the music industry in various roles behind the scenes. I bet he has some stories. And began working on stage design. This included being part of the Live Aid in 1985. Learning how to put on a show would come in handy later, and it doesn't come much bigger than Live Aid. I can see Mick Jagger and Elton John enjoying a post-concert sushi platter. But the one thing that is undeniable about hanging around rock stars is just how cool hats are. Maybe one day, maybe one day. In the meantime, needing a change in life, Simon started to ask people he knew for business ideas. And someone he knew said, you should open a Japanese conveyor belt sushi restaurant, like they have in Japan. He liked the idea and the plan was in motion. A location was needed to bring the idea to life and a place was found on Poland Street in the Soho district of London. With the deal done, Yo Sushi, a new restaurant startup, was off and running. It was 1997, music was at its pinnacle, and London had a new restaurant, a little bit different, and was about to open the doors for the first time. Brightly coloured interior? Check. Lights on? Check. Conveyor belt on? Check. Customers? Not quite. People were unsure what they were looking at. But before long, people were queuing around the block. I think people like the dining theatre, and the thought of something new. People in Britain do like a good queue. The early restaurants were off to a flying start. New locations started to open, little plates of sushi, bright and futuristic decor, and most importantly, customers. London was sold. What could go wrong? Not much really. Yo Sushi went from strength to strength. The restaurants became iconic locations for film and TV. They had a trendy brand image. The second restaurant location was in Harvey Nichols, a high-end department store, so you can probably see where the trendy image was coming from. Early expansion was largely the responsibility of this man, Robin Rowland. Robin increased a handful of Yo Sushi restaurants into what is recognised today. This success generated interest from the suits, and in 2008, Yo Sushi was sold for £51 million to private equity firm Quillbest. Nice. People were on board the sushi train. The company could expand, opening more restaurants, more investment in product development and advertising. In 2015, Yo Sushi was sold again for £81 million to private equity firm Mayfair Equity Partners. The next phase is underway. Yo's menu, Shishio now, remember, has always had a very large range of menu items, just as well given all the conveyor belts. The big benefit of serving predominantly sushi dishes is they are all served cold, which helps, and food quality will stay higher for longer. While sushi is still a primary staple on the menu, as you'd expect, every restaurant needs to keep things fresh and includes menu items. It can't be all fish. How about a doriaki pancake? It's Japanese, after all, but you can go deeper. Inari sushi, golden tofu pockets filled with rice, avocado, salsa, and vegan mayo. Imagine floating this lunchtime option to a coal miner in 1908. A variety of choice with a Japanese theme is how the menu looks. A popular dish in Osaka, apparently. The ever popular fried chicken. Japanese style, of course. Fried chicken is a huge market worldwide, so it makes a lot of sense to attract people. 
Okay, a little bit more of a stretch, but the French fries are not French. They are yo fries and they're Japanese. Oh, come on. You get the drill. Yo burger, Japanese. Can't really blame yo sushi for this. People love burgers. They love burgers a lot. It's a winning formula and you need to pay the rent. This was a limited edition in 2013, an experiment for yo sushi, and they tried to put a distinctive mark on a traditional favorite. They tried a new idea and was somewhat creative. You probably don't think burger if you've chosen a sushi restaurant. Burgers were not the only innovation. Apparently, to convey the message of how light the burgers were, they used an eye tray to deliver them to the tables. Essentially a drone with a tray attached. This was more about product promotion than a realistic food service innovation, but enforces the idea of trying something new. Robot waiters on the other hand? Maybe in the future. Yo robots obviously. Not just robots. Yo's restaurants are predominantly in the UK, and currently there are 53 UK restaurants. The top grossing restaurant is located in Terminal 3 at Heathrow Airport, and has gross sales of up to £20,000 a day. Other than restaurants, Yo has been looking at alternative revenue streams. This includes Yo kiosks, a business model that partners with retailers to deliver fresh sushi and other Japanese dishes that you can buy from supermarkets and retail stores. Yo partnered in the UK with Tesco in an exclusive deal to open hundreds of sushi stations in its supermarkets. And you can view menus online so you could browse what you'll get for dinner while you're pushing your shopping up and down the aisle. More and more restaurants are looking to carry their success from the high street into other retail environments. I guess it's a logical step. The highest grossing takeaway kiosk is actually in a Costco on Hawaii, selling around $45,000 of sushi a week. Aloha. Yo has made some big acquisitions including the takeover of Bento Sushi, the largest sushi manufacturer in Canada. Another acquisition, Taiko, a London-based sushi manufacturer that supplies Waitrose and Snow Fox, the second largest sushi supplier in America. Probably signals Yo's intent to supply sushi globally. Despite a pre-tax loss of £31.7 million, global sales have quadrupled in 2019 to $425 million. International locations? Yes, but not too many, and they are dotted mainly around a few European and Middle Eastern locations. Yo has previously opened locations in America, namely Boston, Washington and New York, but have since closed these. Maybe large American cities have much more sushi options. After all, sushi is worth $20 billion in the United States alone. That's a lot of fish. How do you compete for customers in a crowded market? Turning to technology is usually a popular one. Smartphones, the answer to everything. To make things faster, apparently, you need to scan the QR code on your table, log on to Yo, browse, select, and pay. An LED traffic light system lets you know on the progress of your order. Speed and convenience is what the customer wants. I'm more of a robot waiter kind of guy. People like simple, especially when they're hungry. Back to robot waiters. Please tell me this is a thing. Well. Current CEO Richard Hodgson has teased it. So what's with the name? The company's rebranding has seen a total drop of the word sushi. This is not uncommon when companies look to start diversifying and want customers to think they offer more than the original brand did. Sometimes it is merely a name, other times it is a large overhaul. It can be a tricky exercise, and most that are successful are usually dominant enough in their market that shortening the name doesn't make much difference. Like Pepsi or Kentucky Fried Chicken. If you want people to know you from a single word, then you better be good. Or just a logo, then really good. And will you all shy away from the trademark conveyor belt under the new identity? Maybe. It has already. As part of a trial, Yo has ditched the conveyor belt to be more family friendly. It's a bold move. An £800,000 move for a concept restaurant that opened in the Westfield Shopping Centre in London. The future. What to expect? More and more restaurants want to look to new technology for long-term plans. Combination of robots and automation is a good novelty that companies hope spark interest and separate them from the crowd. But automation helps with the bottom line and can do the boring stuff all day, every day. Robot of the month, anyone? So what has happened to Yoshiaki Shirashi's humble restaurant conveyor belt idea? It didn't stop a sushi. Restaurants all over the world have embraced it. Well, eating cheese has just become easier. The idea? The idea worked. Cheers, Mr. Shirashi. As for the Yo Sushi founder, Simon Woodruff, Simon has started many other Yo brands. Yotel, a Japanese chain of capsule hotels, Yo Home, a modern city apartments, and a Yo Foundation. Someone is paying attention. Simon sold his shares in Yo Sushi early, bought an island. Yo Island is coming. And finally, who's wearing the hat now? Do you think Yo should keep the conveyor belt? Are you a regular customer? If so, what's changed? Thanks for watching.